In this video, we are going to extrapolate over a simple scalping strategy, which we introduced in the two previous videos. So if you are interested in the details and the Python code, I'll leave you a link in the description. In brief, we are using three periods exponential moving averages, the fast, medium, and slow. And if these are aligned in a certain order, we can estimate if the price trend is up or down. In this example, the fast moving average is above the medium moving average, which is above the slow moving average. And in this case, we have an uptrend if the order is inverted, it means we have a downtrend. In an uptrend, we are looking only for buying positions and in a downtrend, we're looking only for selling positions. To identify buying entry points, we are looking for candles opening below and closing above the fast moving average. In the opposite direction, we want to enter a short position. We're looking for a candle opening above and closing below the fast moving average. In this example, we have an uptrend. So we're looking for buying positions and this candle opens below and closes above the fast moving average. This one as well opens below and closes above the curve of the fast moving average and this one right here. So we have three examples of three different signals for buying positions. We have already tested this strategy in a previous video and tried to optimize our parameters. In brief, the best results we could get using a leveraged account 1 to 100 and testing over three years of data is a return percentage of 445 and a win rate of 55%. These results might look rewarding. We also investigated the equity curve and we could see that this strategy is kind of risky because it has large drawdown periods and we didn't have a stable positive climb over the three years of data. So I came across one idea I was curious about and I decided that we could test this idea on top of the strategy we already are using. So we will still be using three moving averages order for trend detection and the candles crossing the fast EMA as an entry signal. However, we are adding one more condition. The candles crossing the fast EMA should also have no or very short tail. If it's an uptrend, and we are looking for a buying position, then the candle should have very short lower tail. And in the opposite direction, we're looking for candles that have no high tail. In this example, we can identify these two candles where we have an uptrend, the candles are crossing the fast moving average in the direction of the trend. And at the same time, they have very low tails confirming a strong upward momentum. And obviously, as usual, the only way to know if this is a valid signal improvement is to backtest these conditions over a long period of time. So in this video, we will test this addition to our strategy and compare the results before and after adding this third condition. We will do this in Python and you can download the source code from the link in the description. It's a Jupyter Notebook file and I hope you will enjoy this. This is our Jupyter Notebook file. Since we have already analyzed this and used the same code in the previous two videos, I will not go through all the details. I'll not spend so much time just to keep this one short. In brief, we are importing the data as the Euro US dollar 15 minutes charts from 2019 up to 2022. This makes three years of data for testing. We're cleaning candles with volume equal to zero and then we're resetting the index of our data frame. We're adding the three moving averages to our data frame and at the same time we're adding the ATR because we're using this for the stop loss and take profits. At the same time, I'm using the slopes of the 50, 100 and 150 moving averages. So not only we are considering the order of the moving averages, but also the three moving averages should be pointing in the same direction. So if it's an uptrend, we need three positive slopes. If it's a downtrend, we need also three negative slopes. So we generate the first signal using only the exponential moving averages, meaning if they are in the same order and pointing in the same direction, we have a first signal. Is it an uptrend or a downtrend? And we add the signal as the EMA signal into our data frame. Again, if this is going too fast, we went through the details in a slower pace in the previous videos. Once we identified the trend using the moving averages, we can generate what we call the total signal, detecting candlesticks crossing the fast moving average in the same direction of the trend. So at this point, I'm not adding the wick limit condition here. So this part is commented. And what we call the total signal is added as a new column into our data frame. At this part, we can visualize our signals on the chart. So this is one sample how we can do this. The purple points are our buying and selling signals that we can see right here. So I'm not going through the details for this one. This video is just for the sake of comparison with our new condition that we're going to add in a while. 
For the back testing part, we're going to test over the whole data that we have. So it's almost three years of data. I'm using an initial size of 30% of our equity, three different ways of setting our stop loss and take profit values. The first one is a fixed one. So here I'm using 45 pips for the stop loss distance and 45 pips for the take profit distance. I'm starting with an account of $100 and a margin of one over 100 or a leverage of one to 100. So there are different ways of setting the stop loss and take profit values and these might influence the results that we are going to observe in this case i used three different ways the first one is this fixed one 45 pips and then we use the different one using an atr related stop loss and take profit meaning the stop loss distance is directly related to the atr value here it's twice the atr value and the take profit is set according to the stop loss take profit ratio which is 1.2 here meaning that the take profit distance is 1.2 times the stop loss distance another one is a method where we use the trailing stop loss using the ATR distance as well. So this one is a trailing stop loss without a take profit. And the fourth one I've added is a stop loss that is observed from price, meaning I'm checking the six candles that are preceding the signal candle. I'm checking the lowest value if we are in a buying position or the highest value of these candles if we are in a selling position and I'm setting this as a stop loss distance. So technically the way I'm doing this I'm adding the uh, minimal or maximal value from the back candles in a new column in our data frame which I call the stop loss signal that I'm going to use later on when I'm back testing my strategy. Of course, once we have our stop loss, we need also to set our take profit distance, which is done using the take profit stop loss ratio that I put to 1.2 for this test here. So as you can see, I've tested many different ways for setting the stop loss and take profit and the management of our trades. Now let's check the results, add our third condition and start the comparison. So at first using fixed distance stop loss and take profit values, we got 445% in return, what we can see here, and a win rate of almost 55%. The number of trades is 375 over three years of data. The equity curve is not very stable. We have large drawdowns, as we can see, and we can move on to the second method. The ATR related stop loss and take profit using a ratio, we're getting 74% in return and a winning ratio of 47%. And the equity is also showing drawdowns, not a positive or stable curve. However, it gives the impression that it's slightly safer than the previous method of stop loss and take profits. Again, a trailing stop loss using the ATR distance as well. We're getting a return of minus 39%. So it's a losing strategy. It's a losing method and the win rate is around 36%, so which is the worst we have tried so far. A very high number of trades, as we can see. We can move on to the next one. We can see, anyway, the equity looks very bad in the sense that it has almost a year and a half of uh, no returns. Then we have a very high return at some point. The algorithm, for some reason, worked well on the market. And then we have a big drawdown, which we are not looking for. We're trying to avoid in algorithmic trading. Using the stop loss from the prices or from the candle is also another method that we have tried and here we have a return of minus 89% a win rate percentage of 47% the equity is showing a very noisy behavior with an average negative slope so it's a losing strategy so far now I'm going to modify the total signal by adding the third condition we have just explained in this video so in the case of a downtrend we need that the higher value of the candle minus the open value which is the highest value of the body of the candle this difference should be lower or equal than a parameter that we're calling wick limit at this point i'm setting the wick limit to 2 10 to minus 5 this will largely depend on the type of currencies you are using and the data you are downloading if it's five or four digits decimal precision in the case of an uptrend meaning when the signal is equal to two then we have a crossing candle going from below to above the fast moving average and at the same time we need that this candle's open value minus the lowest value meaning the lower tail or the lower wick distance less or equal than 
our week limit. So again, our week limit is simply a variable parameter that we can modify and experiment on. So I'm starting with 2, 10 to minus 5 as a first attempt. So the first thing we notice is that we have less number of signals, these purple points that we are plotting on the charts. And this is normal because we have just added a new condition. Okay, let's take a look at the results. Now we're running the first backtesting using fixed distance stop loss and take profits. Now we have a return percentage of 1805%. So remember that we have used the same conditions. I have modified nothing in the code except the fact that we added our third condition, meaning short wick for the candles crossing the fast moving average in the direction of the trend. So the win rate is up to 59% in this case. And most importantly, the uh, plot of the equity is showing an increasing slope over the three years. So of course, we will always have drawdown periods and some non-profitable years, for example. But overall, we have this increasing slope that we can see here. So the effect of adding this condition on this particular strategy was extremely positive from this perspective. The second one is also using the ATR related stop loss and take profit distances. Here we have a return of 249%. So it increased from the previous value and we have a win rate percentage of 51%. At the same time, if we look at the equity curve, we also have an uptrend positive equity. Again, we will always have those drawdown periods from time to time, but overall we are seeing an increase in the profit over the three years period. The trailing stop loss with ATR related distance was a losing method using the previous conditions. So here now we have a 394% in return over the three years and we have a win rate of 42.5%. The equity is showing an uptrend, but then we have a large drawdown period. So this is not really a good method to, uh, to be used. But anyway, the effect of adding this third condition, meaning the low wick candles, made this strategy a winning strategy. Before this, it was a completely losing strategy. And our final method is using the stop loss from the prices or from the candles. We have a return of 373%. So remember, this was a losing strategy before, a losing method. When we tried it without the low wick condition, it gave something around minus 70 or minus 80%. So here we have plus 373% and the win rate of 49%, which was around 36% before adding this third condition. And most importantly, the plot of the equity shows an increase in the first period, then we have a drawdown, then a second increase in the third period, let's say. It's not an ideal strategy. Definitely, it's not a good system to trade with. However, this video shows the importance of the low wick condition. It improved all the four methods for this particular strategy, which is the main purpose of this video. So adding the third condition with the no-wick candles improved our equity from this behavior to this behavior. We can see a continuous increase in the equity, which looks way better than the previous behavior. And it led to higher returns as well. So we're reaching above 2000% here as a highest return value. Please remember that the purpose of this video is not to present you with a full trading system. It's simply to show the effect of this particular condition when added on a simple strategy. So maybe you can consider adding this into your system. This might not be the only interesting candle pattern that we could investigate, but for this video, we will stop here. I hope you guys liked it. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.